Hello and welcome to lesson 6.2.3. Are they similar? So for the last couple of days, we've been talking about dilating shapes. Yesterday we had sh shapes that were a little bit distorted. And so today we are going to compare shapes. And what we're gonna ask ourselves is we're looking at these shapes. How do the shapes grow or shrink? What parts can we compare? and how can we write comparisons, okay? So these are some of the things that we're going to be thinking about. Yesterday we had a problem, 6-54, and we had a dilated shape, okay? And yesterday you wrote three parts. That first part was, we noticed that the lines were parallel. When we dilated the shape on the coordinate graph, the lines were parallel. Okay, the second thing that we noticed was it was a dilation of three and it took three of the smaller shapes sides to make one of the larger shape sides. So the dilation also coordinated with the number of sides, small to large. The third thing that we noticed in 6-34 was that the angles were exactly identical. So today we have shapes A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. I would like you to please label that on the left-hand side of your margin there. You have these shapes on the right and you have lines there on the left. Go ahead and write A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Because what we're going to do is we are going to compare the original shape. I, I went ahead and made this red shape. Uh, you could take a scissors and cut out this shape, but that would cut out some of your homework as well. So don't do that, okay? Let's go ahead and just work through this. If this red is the original shape, and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna hover over it. Well, that's, um, oh, it looks like it needs to be rotated. If I rotate this shape, I can kind of cover this up. And what would you say about how the original shape compares to shape A? What word could we write next to letter A? Well, to me, they're the same, okay? It's a little bit thick of a pen there, Mr. McCoy. They look the same to me. They look like they are the same size, okay? It's important that we notice same size here, okay? Same angles, notice that the lines are parallel, they're actually identical. Um, so that, that's something that I could notice in shape A. Let's go ahead and rotate this back to the original, okay? Because now I need to compare this to shape B. If I take this and I go over shape B, well, what do you notice about the lines? The lines are parallel, very good. You notice the lines are parallel. You notice the angles are the same. So we're gonna say that this is a similar shape. Notice that the other one was the same size, same shape, right? But this one is a similar shape. It's not the same size. That's why we call it similar. Okay, let's go ahead and hover over C. Well, C, what do you think? I noticed that my angles are the same. Notice that my lines are parallel. What can we say about shape C? Well, we're, we're going to go ahead and say the same thing that these, man. Oh, I don't want to do that. I can't, I can't copy and paste. Where's my shortcut, Mr. McCoy? Let's see if I can do it. There we go, Mr. McCoy. Similar shape. Okay. It is a similar shape. Uh, it's not the same size. It's it's smaller. It's been reduced. Okay. Now, if I hover over D, uh, I notice if I try and line up the corners, only one corner matches. Notice those angles don't match. If the angles don't match, what did we learn? What word did we learn yesterday? Right? It's one of those funny mirrors. It's a situation where D is distorted. Distorted. D is distorted. Problem letter E. 
Uh, this looks like this shape is upside down, so let me rotate this upside down. Okay, now once I've rotated this shape upside down, uh, I can make the observation that uh, E looks like my angles line up. It looks like my lines are parallel. So what comment do we say about E? Well, it is going to be a similar shape. Oh, I missed a couple letters. Similar. There we go. Okay. Letter F. Let's rotate this back around. A little more rotation, Mr. McCoy. There we go. Looks like letter F. Yeah, letter F. It looks like letter F is also a similar shape. Letter G. And it doesn't look like my angles are lining up. What does that mean? Go ahead and write in your lines for F and G. Now notice that A, same. We have uh, similar shapes. Similar shapes B, C, E, and F are all similar shapes. Okay? And it's good to be able to recognize that shapes are similar. But we also need to be able to recognize when we have a scale factor. Scale factor is the new word that we're going to use for when a shape has been multiplied by a number. And off to the side where you have a couple lines left, I want you to record. Scale factor is the number you multiply the length of one side of a shape to get the corresponding side of the new shape. That's a lot. Go ahead and write that down right now. Now, how do we find the scale factor? Well, if I have my original shape, and I'm going to go ahead and hover over A. If I hover over A, notice that these are exactly the same size. A is times 1. Same, when you multiply by 1, you get the same answer. Okay, 1 times 3 is still 3. So we need to go ahead and mark that down, that it is 1 time. Okay, now, problem number letter B. I want you to notice, I'm going to go ahead and make a little mark right there. There's, there's one length, and if I go ahead and take this and I measure, if I scoot this over all the way over here, how much is left? Well, I should record this is a half. So that means the scale factor in problem letter B is one and a half times bigger. It is one and a half times bigger. If I do problem letter C, well, how much is that? C is half the size. Notice C got smaller, so I used the fraction half the size. Uh, D, D is distorted, therefore it does not have a scale factor. Let's go ahead and do letter E. If I take letter E, let's go ahead and get some of this out of the way. Letter E, if I line this up, okay, here's one. And I can line this back over. Oh, it is two times larger. Two times larger. Last one. Let's rotate this a little bit more. Notice that I'm just using the shape to be the measuring tool. Okay, and uh, there's one. There's two. And there's, oh, it's not three. Looks like it's two and a half times larger. 
This is scale factor. You have to be able to look at the side length and determine how much bigger, or in the case of problem letter C, how much smaller. So please make sure that you have the scale factors recorded inside of those shapes. Okay? Problem 65. Okay? Shapes that are similar but do not grow or shrink are called congruent shapes. I want you to write this down next to this problem. Write down. Shapes that are similar but do not grow or shrink are called congruent shapes. That means same shape, same size, identical in every way. We're going to use the word congruent from here on. So write that down, please. Now, Problem letter A, you're going to write off to the side. You have room over here to write letter A. Which shape from problem 64 is exactly equal to the original shape in every way? So I'm looking at these. Which of these, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, is original exactly the same as the original? Well, shape A is identical in every way. So in 65, let's record A. Shape A is identical to the original, okay? Now, we use the word identical because it matches. That's the words we've been using up until now. Today, we're going to introduce the word congruent. That means does not grow, does not shrink. They're similar. They're the like the same shape, but they're, they're not the same shape as in they're two different shapes. You have the original and you have A, right? They're two shapes. They are similar. They match, okay? They are identical. They are congruent. Problem letter B, record the pairs of shapes below that appear to be congruent to each other. So just looking at the problems in front of you, which of these appear to be congruent? So I want you to write B. You're going to write the pairs. Some letter is congruent to which shape? I want you to look and compare. Pause the video so that you can record those pairs. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about congruence. Uh, let's go ahead and pick shape B. Is shape B congruent to, nope, that's too small. What about F? Nope, that's too small. Nope, that's going to be too small. So B is not the answer. Um, how about D? If I outline D, is D congruent to F? Nope, F is bigger. Uh, G, that looks like it's similar in size. Let's rotate this around. Let's match. Ah, yes. G is congruent to D. Okay, there's one answer. There's one other answer here, and hopefully you can pick it out. Problem letter C, get a piece of tracing paper. I just did that, okay? I, pr I proved it to you that that pair matches. You figure out which is the other pair. Problem 66, Quan enlarged shape Q. This is the, this is the original, and this is the new. Are his shapes similar? Well, they look similar. Identify a scale factor. What did Quan multiply Q by to get P? What you need to do is you need to go around and label the dimensions of this shape. Like, I noticed this is 3, 1, 3, 5, 5, and uh, this one is a down one, right two. Down one, right two, okay? And what I want you to do is I want you to go around this new shape and I want you to figure out what was the multiplier. Then you're going to write a sentence off to the side. Quan multiplied shape Q by this number to get shape P, okay? This is the beginning of understanding scale factor. Dilation is a scale factor. How much bigger, how much smaller, understanding similarity, understanding congruence. These are all words that we are trying to develop. 
Thanks for coming today. Stick with us as you come to these YouTube videos, and I hope that you continue to stay caught up with your work. Thanks for coming, and we'll see you next time.